declare healed bodies and set them free, praise the Lord. We, you will know with me in Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, and beginning at the twelfth verse, we will read. Seven chapter of Deuteronomy, beginning. And I, I like to start at the at the sixth verse, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto him, self above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, not chose you because you were more in number than any people, for you were fewer of all people. But because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your father, has the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. We're going to skip down to the 12th verse. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if you hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep thee unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swore unto thy father. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, the corn and the wine and thine oil the increase of thy kin and the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he swore unto the Father to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you, or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will not put none of the evil disease of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate God. We're going to talk today about the covenant of love. Say the covenant of love. What is the covenant? A covenant is a contract between two individuals. So God made this covenant contract with the people of Israel. And not only with the people of Israel, but with you and I, we have this covenant contract. We have this agreement that God had given to the children of Israel and has been passed down to you and I. What is this? It's, it's a spiritual agreement between God as our leader and his holy people, between God and man. You can make a covenant between male and female. You can make an oath. You can make a pledge. The main pledge that men and women make among themselves is a marriage pledge or a marriage oath. But God made a love covenant for mutual protection for his people. Not only that, he made a secure peace covenant with his people. He made a friendship covenant with his people. And not only that, he said, I'm going to assist you in war. But then he said, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one love. He loves you. The Lord, your God, he wants us to love the Lord with what? All our heart and with all our soul and with all our strength and everything that is within us. He wants us to do what? Love him. How many of you really love God? You put God first. 
That's how last week we was talking about how God tested Abraham, and Abraham passed the test. A lot of times you want a testimony, but you don't want a test. But in testimony, you a test come before the testimony. You gonna be tested, but then you you have a testimony. Uh, these commandments I give you are to be in your heart. Um, Part them on to your children. Talk about them. You know what? I noticed that the people in this day and time, they don't talk to their children about what God has done. They do not talk to their children about how God brought them out, how God made a way, how God healed them. In fact, you don't talk to people about what the Lord has done in your life, how God has saved you and sanctified you and fill you with the Holy Ghost. Some of you all got miracle testimonies, what God has done, but we fail to tell others about what God has done. Amen. He said, but I want you to pass it on. And then he went on to say, on to your children. Talk about them. When you sit at home, how many of you are? I have heard uh, Bishop Gibson them talk about how their daddy used to sit down and talk to them. Tell them things that had happened, Alba cooping them all up, that what God has done. You need to tell your children, pass it on. Tell a little bit of children what the Lord has done. When he told them, he said, when you sit at home and when you walk along, uh, along the road, when you be down uh, and when you get up, when you are down, when you get up, my Lord, write them on your door frames of your house. Some of you all, when we was passing out the Red Cross the year before all of this epidemic come on, amen, we say, put it on your doorpost. Put it on your doorpost. Oh, my God. When the Lord your God bring you into the land, he promised to your father, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land which is large, flourishing cities, you did not be. If you don't believe this word, go over there and do the wrong and start at, at the first of do the wrong and go all the way through to the 31st verse, 31st chapter, and see what all God had promised them. Moses is reminding them what God has said because he's getting ready to leave them, but he wants them to keep the law that God had given them. He said, you're going to be in cities you did not build, houses filled with all kind of good things. You did not provide, wells you did not dig, vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be, call, be, uh, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. It's one thing about the people today. They so soon to forget what God has done for us. God has brought us out. He has blessed us. He has blessed our going out and our coming in. And everything we set our hand to do, he has blessed us. He has over blessed us. Oh, my God. But you can't forget it was the Lord who blessed you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hand has produced this wealth for me. But remember, your job, oh, my God. You can have a job today and not have a job tomorrow. Amen. You that is depending on your job, you better look to the Lord and depend on the Lord. Oh, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and to confirm his love covenant, which he promised to your forefathers, as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God, and for this is Moses talking. I'm talking to you today. Do not forget what God has done for you. Do not forget how God has brought you out. Do not forget the prosperity that you have. It all come from God. 
Oh, my God. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today. You will surely be destroyed like the nations the Lord destroyed before you. So you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. Say, Lord, help me to obey you. Help me to walk upright in your sight. Help me to speak the truth out of my heart. Help me to live a holy life. He's coming back for holy people. Someone that has separated themselves from the things of the world. Oh, the love covenant. This is a love covenant that God made with the children of Israel. What is a covenant? A covenant is something like an umbrella. Uh -huh, that covers you uh, and keep you safe from the rain. A covenant, praise the Lord, of love. He let you know I love you. I love you, and I'm going to bless you if you will obey and keep my laws and obey my commandment and do it God's way. Stop trying to go your own way. Stop trying to do your own thing. Stop saying, I don't see it like that. Oh, we need to see it like the word of God say. And then it said, but those who hate him, he will repay to their face. This is the 10th verse and the 7th chapter. He said, he will repay to their face by destruction. He will not be slow to repay to their face. Those who hate him. Therefore, the 11 verse say, therefore take care to follow the commandment, decree, and love. You got to love God. You got to love him with all of your heart, your mind, and your soul, right? He said if you pay attention to these laws and are careful to follow them, then the Lord your God will keep his covenant of love with you as he swore to your forefather. He will love you and bless you and increase your numbers. He will bless the fruit of your womb, the crop of your land, your grain, new wine, and oil, the calves of your herd, and the lambs of your flock in the land that he swore to your forefathers to give you. You will be blessed more Listen to what the Lord said. You will be blessed more than any other people. Woo! Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Now you're sitting up here saying, I ain't got nothing. Maybe you're not doing it God's way. Maybe you're trying to make your own way and not make the way of God. That's what's wrong with the people today. They're trying to make their own way. They're trying to do their own thing. You will be blessed more than any other people. None of you, uh, men or women, will be childless. Not any of your livestock. Uh-huh. They will produce much. The Lord will, the Lord will keep you free from all sickness. I'm talking about what God told the children of Israel. And not only that did he give it to Abraham, it has passed down to you and I. The blessings of the Lord has passed down to you and I. You don't have to believe the word. I'm talking about what the word says. Over there in the 15th verse. The Lord will keep you free from all sickness. And will put none of the evil disease of, Eden, of Egypt. Which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate you. For you are a people. What kind of people? You are holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all of the people on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasure possession. The Lord did not set his affection on you and chose you because you were more numerous than other people. 
For you were the least. You was the fewest of all people. But it because the Lord loved you. I believe the Lord loved you and I. He loved us. He loved the black people because he bought them out of slavery. Amen. He bought them out of slavery. Even when they bought them over here into the United States of America. They, 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 they bought them over with change and all. But God set them free. God opened up the door. God has blessed us. Oh, my God. If they could see us now. If they could see us now. They say, surely the Lord has blessed you. The Lord told you, for you are a people. What kind of people is God talking to? A holy people. A people separated from the things of the world. A people that love God. Oh, my God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the people on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. The Lord did not set his affliction on you and chose you because you were so numerous. But it's because you, you were a few people, just a few people. When we started this church, we started with one or two. A few people. A few people. But because when you be faithful and you be honest and you don't mind uh, praying and seeking the face of God, God said, I will multiply you. I will bless you. I will increase you. Oh, my God. Some people in the same shape they, they've been in for the last 30, 40 years. It's something wrong when you say, I'm a child of God. A change should come in your life. A change should come in your home. A change should come on your job. You ought to be, he said, I make you to be the head and not the tail. Oh, my God. He said, I want to bless you. But you got to love me with all your heart. You got to love me. But everything is, you got to do it my way. Yeah. Your way ain't going to work. Yeah. You see it's not working. Why keep on doing the same dumb thing over and over and over again? Why not ask God? Yeah. Oh, God, what will you have me to do? Yeah. Give me that wisdom and knowledge how to go out and come in. Yeah. But you're doing the same thing over and over again, and you see it's not working. Say it's not working. How many of y'all know it ain't working? I want to raise your hand, be honest. How many of you know it's not working? Because you're not trying to do it God's way. You're not trying to do it God's way. You're trying to do it who? Your way. But your way will not work. Oh, my God. My Lord. The Lord want to bless his people. He want to bring you out. Praise the Lord. God established his love covenant. The first covenant he established, it was with Abraham. And not only that, did he establish that covenant with Abraham. He went on and established with Noah. The love co covenant that God made with Noah. God established his love covenant with Noah. And with his seed after him, God told Noah, as long as the earth endure, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Oh, my God. As long as the earth remain, how many of you know you're going to have a harvest Seed time. You're going to have a winter. You're going to have a summer. You're going to have a fall. You're going to have a spring. It shall not. I'm talking about what God's word say. It shall not what? It shall not what? It shall not what? Cease. When you wake up in the morning, you see the sun, bright sunshine. 
peeping through the cloud. My God, when you wake up, my Lord, the seasons will never change, yellow cloth. The seasons, praise God, hallelujah, it will not cease. And then I got so excited when I, when I was reading in Genesis the night and the 12th verse, and it said, God loved covenant with Noah, establish my covenant with you. And with your descendants, God loved. He had a covenant with him. He was covering him. He was protecting him. Oh, my God. And you know what, he's, and what he said to Noah? God told Noah, neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by flood or water. It might be flooding over there in different areas, but the whole earth will never flood again. And men and women will, all men and women on the face of the earth will never be destroyed at one time. I'm talking about what God said. I ain't talking about what you said. I'm talking about what the word said. Mother, he said that word, didn't he? He said, it will not be cut off anymore by flood or water. Neither shall there be any more flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I'm making between me and you. And every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. Are you in that generation? And then I read where it said, a thousand to a thousand years. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord, are you in that generation? Oh, yes. I have set my rainbow in the cloud, and it will be the sign of the love covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appear in the cloud, I will remember my covenant. Look at God. What a mighty God we serve. When he, look, when he see, he remember his covenant that he made with Abraham. He remember his covenant that he made with Noah. I will not destroy the earth, all earth by flood. Oh, my God. And every time I see the rainbow. Oh, God. Woo, Jesus. Every time I'm going to remember the covenant that I made. Isn't it wonderful how God made a covenant with his people that are holy, set apart for the master's use. How he made a covenant to take care of us and protect us and to bless us. Oh, a great covenant. That covenant of love, he loved us. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Oh, my God. He give us a what? When you see, how many of you are when you see the sun? Do you ever look up in the sky in the element? I love to look up in there. Sometimes I be riding with people, and I say, do you see how beautiful, how beautiful the element is up there? All of the clouds is up there. Then after a while, you see the sun. And after a while, when the sun go down, the moon come up. Oh, hallelujah. Do you see a difference? Can you tell when a storm is getting ready to come up? Then the clouds get very dark. Amen. And it get dark in different sections of the city of Raleigh. Amen. Because God is, and you said, I believe a storm is getting ready to come. Come on now. Oh, but when God said, I see the rainbow. Woo, hallelujah. My covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every Never again the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rain bow appear in the cloud, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and Noah. Oh, my God. Isn't that wonderful that when God see that covenant, my Lord, the rainbow, he remembered the covenant that he had with who? With Noah. 
he remembered the covenant that he had with Abraham. Woo, Jesus. He said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you, Abraham. I'm going to bless you. Go out there, Abraham, walking by the seaside. He said, I'm going to bless you and increase your seeds as the sea, the, the, the uh, <laughs> praise the Lord, as the sea, as, oh, mm. help me out, children, help me. Yeah, I know, yeah, see, out there. And then he went up there and said, you see the stars, Abraham. I'm going to bless you, praise the Lord. God want to bless his people. He want to bless his people. How many of you know he want to bless you? He want to bless you. He want to bless you. He want to bless his people. He told the children, I'm going to bless you. If you do what I uh, keep my laws and my commandment, I'm going to bless you. Oh, the seashore. My Lord, the, the sand on the seashore. I'll get it straight in a minute. The sand. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. And we want to be under that covenant. How many of you all want to be under the covenant? How many of you want to be under the covenant? How many of you want to be under that covenant of love? How many of you want to be under that covenant of protection? How many of you want to be under that covenant of healing? Being healed. Not letting those disease come upon you. How many of you want to be under that covenant? No, 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 no. 